I usually like the girls to warm up with, with just some footwork stuff. Uh, here, Ariel's just uh, doing a simple drive step to the pin. She's picking up her right foot, pushing off her left, and being in that same finishing position that she starts in. So stay right there, just stay there. So I like her in this position uh, to start off with. Her hands are in front of her body, um, shoulder height to, to her face maybe. Her hands aren't down by her waist. Um, they're not straight up in the air. Uh, we we uh, call this almost our prepare to block. So uh, we want all three blockers when they're doing this sort of in this position. I think it's an athletic position that they can move from. Um, you see a lot of kids today running along the net with their hands up above their heads. I don't think that's a real athletic uh, way to move. So we like the kids to keep their hands uh, basically from their face. Uh, and if they move, have long distance to go, they can drop them uh, to about their waist. So we'll just do a few more drive steps here. All right. And so really we're just, I'm really concentrating more on where her hand position is when she moves and, and how her feet and I want her covering some ground. Hey, let's uh, go to the other side so you're almost going the opposite way. Good. Good. So she's real smooth with her hands. There's not a lot of upper body motion. Head stays upright. And I just want her really nice and controlled, taking up a lot of space. Really driving, really driving her feet going maybe six feet with how far she's going on her drive. Good. All right, so this is just our crossover move. Um, so if she has to cover a little bit more ground, if she's a right side blocker, she can help on the 31 in the 31 zone on the middle and still be able to get out to the pin and close on an outside attacker. Start square all the time, okay? So those are the things I'm looking for when we do this, is that we're starting pretty square all the time. She has a tendency to want to start facing in the direction she's going, so we're, uh, we're, just, we're just trying to be really disciplined in what we're doing. We're just not letting them do these moves. One more time. But same thing, notice how her hands never get really below her waist. She likes to rock her arms a little bit, which is okay with me. Go one more time, eh? All right, so she's, she has a nice rocker motion with her hands to get some momentum up, but they're not coming way low below her waist. She's just sort of driving her elbows back. Good, one more. So she's just driving her elbows, hands down by the side, and she's pushing from her chest. Here. So you can do this. The kids can do this in the beginning as a nice little warm-up before they stretch just to get the muscles going. Uh, they can do it after they stretch. Um, we just like them to do it a little bit uh, before practice starts, just to get their legs loose and, and to uh, get, their, get their bodies warm. This is for a little bit longer move. She's going to pick up her right foot, step, cross over, block. Okay, so she can cover, we're hoping she can cover about 10, 12 feet with this move. She's going to step, cross over, step. Get those hips around, be square, don't drift on it. Good, better. So the big key for her is, stop right there, okay, let's go again. The big key here is what I really want to concentrate when I'm making this move is stop when you get to this point here, okay? Good. Yep. Crossover. I want her to get her hips around so she's square. A lot of times kids get faced this way and that's where they end up facing when they're blocking. So. When we do these long moves, I want big steps, and I, at the end, I want to really concentrate. Just go slow motion again. I want them to really concentrate on this point, getting those hips around. It will eliminate some drifting. I don't want them jumping off of one foot, but I want them to get their hips around and still jumping from the same spot that we were doing um, when we were doing the drive step. So everything, when we finish, should look pretty close. Go ahead, one more time. Good. So I'll tell her she needs to get her right foot around a little bit more. Swing that right foot around. Good. Better. So bigger, a little bigger first step. Get all the way to the pin. 
Good. And sometimes we'll, we'll work on them. Almost we're trying to present a, an option of them sort of moving when they're triple blocking a little bit. So uh, a Scott might have to take a few hop steps, shuffle steps into the middle of the court, and then I'll want her to go and triple block. So get there, make those shuffles, then a good crossover, okay? Shuffle, shuffle. Good. So there we're treating her like she's the left side blocker. She's going to come out and block a ball, and we want her to triple. So we work on that move uh, just to get them in a little bit of a rhythm of what it feels like for her to be closing on the triple block. Here we're, we're saying it's going to be a front one, and we want A. Scott to take away the ball that's being driven to her left. So she knows she needs to set up on that ball, right hand on the ball, and her left hand's taking away that good angle shot. So we'll hit a few balls here and we'll sort of critique it and, and see if we need to fix anything. Okay, so don't, don't let your hands drop so low, okay? Just from that point. Good, just touch it here. Good. Good, not such a big uh, drop. Good, that's better. Good. Good. Notice when, I, when she's doing this, her hands are pretty wide apart. Her fingers are spread and her hands are big. So we want her to take... We want her to take two angles... Hold on a second, okay. We want her to take two angles. Put your hands... Like, I like her taking straight. Go put them through the net. Okay, so we want her to take two angles. And so we're working on that. We want that left hand of hers to take away that hard ball driven to the sideline. And we want her right hand to take the ball almost back into the middle of the court. So we're saying we're going to give up, cut back to, the, back to the one, and that's the shot she's taking. So we want him to feel taking away that shot here on the front one. Good. Good. That's better. Good. Good. So dry those hands. Dry those hands low and tight. Good. Okay, hold up. So when we talk with the girls about blocking, uh, we don't necessarily want them to block the ball. We want them to block an area and then block the ball if it comes in that area. I, I see too many kids are always reaching for the ball. She has a responsibility of what she's taking and if the ball comes in that area, we want her to block it. But I don't want her reaching outside her body. I think her hands are strongest when she's about shoulder width apart. When they get out, it's got to go real wide with your hands. When they get out there, she doesn't have a whole lot of strength. So we're always talking about shoulder width apart. I think that's where the kids are the strongest. They have some muscle behind that block. And and uh, it's for them, especially when they're air, I think it's the point where they're strongest. So let's take some cutback balls here. So now we'll take some cutback, where now she's taken away this area. She's given up the ball to the five. But same deal. We want her left hand now straight on the ball, right hand taking the hard cutback shot. Good. Good. Okay, so hey, too big, too big of a drop, okay? You're dropping too deep here. Good. Good. So, same thing when we're training our right side blocker, our left side blocker, a lot of box stuff. Um, and we'll try to set specific parameters for them where now we're telling Ariel that she has to take line. She has to get to the line and seal. We know that the hitter is going to hit the ball line, that's fine. But I always want her to get to the line here, and that's what we're really focused on. Her getting there, being stationary, and, and, and driving her hands. And then we'll go through the cycle where we'll do all three sets of footwork getting to the line. So just we're just going to do some drive steps. Okay, so hey, so why does that happen? Yeah, okay, so, so we're giving feedback on hand position. Good. A little bit bigger with your hands. Right now with her, one of the things we're working on is, is trying to be a little bit bigger with her inside hand. Right hand's driving straight across, left hand's into the seam a little bit. 
Good. A little bit bigger with that left hand. Don't let that left hand come back to the ball. Good. Hey, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger footwork. Get to the line, right foot on that line. Seal that pin. Good. Good. Now keep that body square. That's better. Good. 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 And now with this, what we'll try to do is, I'll say to, to whoever's on the box, or if I'm on the box, we're going to hit your take a line, we're going to hit this ball into the seam. Okay? So we're going to hit into the 1-6 seam. So what I want Ariel to concentrate on is taking that ball, blocking the ball in the seam with her left hand. So she's going to block the ball down line with her right hand. She's going to ball, block the ball that's in the seam with her left hand. So two different balls that I want her blocking. Good. A little harder in the seam. Okay, she can get it. Good. So I'll tell her, so on that I'm going to say she has to drive her left hand a little bit more into that ball, okay? So left hand goes. Good. Good. That's better. Okay, so hey, we can slow down a little bit. Hey, Scott, slide into the black line a little bit more and be start square, okay? Don't face K, start square. Good. So that's what I'm looking for. I want her to see that left hand block that ball in the seam. So cross, drive it across. Good. So when I see her block that with one hand, I like that right now. I think that's a good move by her. That's the ball I want. So if K, same thing. If K doesn't, now we can hit both down line and hit some balls in the seam. She should be taking the ball down line with that right hand, seam left hand, all right? Good. Okay. Hips around every time. Good. Better. Good. Good. Right there. Square. Start square. Start square. Stop. 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 Start square. Good. Good. What I like to do is, um, we were taking line before getting to the line. Now we're giving line a little bit here. So what I like to do is put up a second antenna uh, on the net to give uh, our blockers a feel of how far they need to go or, or what it means to give up line a little bit. So we like to give up that alley so the blockers have a feel of what it means to give up line uh, and the kids have a better understanding of it. So we'll just we'll go through it. We'll just do a few here just that so we can see, but I just wanted you guys to see what it meant to how we sort of get the girls a feel uh, when we're giving up line. So we'll go through both scenarios. So we have, we took line earlier, now they have a feeling what it's going to be to, to uh, block cross court. Good. Good. Stay big with that left hand, not to the ball. Good. It's better. So do this with, if you just have middle hitters, and you want them to, and you don't have a second person to maybe stand out on the antenna that's taking line. Your middle hitters have a good idea of where they have to go to. So I always like using that second antenna sort of as a reference point for our blockers, so they know um, where they have to go, how far they have to get to, and it's just sort of a visual key for them, and they can feel that antenna. Left side blockers, uh, we'll do the same thing where she's going to start making some. Uh, drive moves to her left, take in line, uh, but we'll do the exact same thing. Good. Good. Crop. Good. Uh, so left hand's drifting a little bit on you, okay? Good. Good. You notice she's not blocking real high, but she's trying to get across the net as far as possible. I want them low, tight, over the net. What we talk about is, with them is, instead of maybe pushing up from the shoulders, we want them to push from their chest, almost like doing a bench press type of move. So they're going to go diagonally up the net instead of up and over. I want their hands to maybe going up on a 45 degree angle. 
and driving across the net right at the top. Forearms across the top of the net, hands across. As the kids get better at this and feel more comfortable, we'll start to make it a little bit more game-like where um, we'll tell her, okay, you have to jump with the front one like you got fooled and then recover out to get to the five ball, okay? So we'll start to add, because these things happen uh, in games where kids get fooled, and so now we're starting to add more game-like features into it as to what we want to do. So she got fooled, now she has to recover fast and get there. So we'll start to add these features into it as we progress along. The tough thing with kids is eye sequence. So what we'll try to do, what we've been doing with them, okay, so uh, start outside of them. Outside, good, right there. So what we're talking about, a ball sequence is uh, the ball from the passer to the setter in the setter's hands, and then when the setter releases it, finding the hitter. So what we'll do is, uh, if we don't even have a person, we could just stick a ball cart here, and this is where our Ariel's focus will be to start with. So what we'll say is, okay, I want your focus on the setter, all right? So the ball's in the setter's hands. I want her focus on that reading the set. And then I'll go setter, and then we'll go hitter, okay? Hey, Scott, so you're focused on AJ. When I say hitter, your eyes are going to K, and you're making your move to her, okay? All right, so setter, hitter. Good. So we'll work on that. So that's what we'll do. Setter, hitter. Good. Her eyes, as soon as the setter releases the ball, and we can even go as far as to letting AJ throw a ball back there, behind K a little bit, and that's when we'll have her release. So you progress with the ball being stationary to now the ball being released from the setter, and she has to react to that. No, just, just from your hands, that's good right now, okay? Get there, good. Get a little further back, AJ. Just a little further behind K, right? So it's setter, hitter. Good. Setter, hitter. Good. Little drift, get those hips. Big first step, get there, okay? Setter, hitter. Good. Progress a little more. <laughs> Stay there. What we're going to do is let Kalina, we're still going to set back. You can move along the box so you can face down line. You got to get to the line. If she's facing cross, you got to take cross on her. All right, so you're making that read on that hitter, okay? So Kay's going to move her face wherever she is, and then you have to find her, okay? So it's going to be setter, hitter. Good. Setter, hitter. Good, good. That's the way to catch yourself. See that here? A little earlier, okay? Setter, hitter. Good. Setter, hitter. Good. Setter, hitter. Better, hitter. Better. A lot better. Big difference, all right? It's a pretty important principle to our blocking that we really like to triple block as much as possible. So we'll, we'll work on it. We showed you a little bit of the footwork, but we'll show you. We work a little bit live, too, if we can, where we'll just have people stand, whether we just have some boys at practice or, or some other people that will just stand. So she'll get a feel for it where now she has to make her move and she's gonna, we'll give her a target almost. So what I like to do at times is, is say, okay, we're gonna hit the ball at this, at this ball card, okay? So that's your block, that's your area you have to take away, all right? So we'll have the person in the box hitting at that and that's what A. Scott's responsible for taking away, okay? Good. So a little high right now. Okay. Good. That's a good touch. And so, you know, we don't have to block every ball. I think one of the things is everyone thinks you have to block every ball. We sort of have a priority. The first thing we'd like to do is, is stuff the ball, obviously. The second thing is we just want to slow it down so the defense can play it. The third thing we'd like our block to do is be solid enough so we can defend around the ball if someone misses the block 
we have our defenders in a good spot. So when your kids are make touches like that, you got to be really positive with it, reinforce it that that's a good touch, and you hope you have defensive people good enough to make the play. So, so that's a I think that's a very good touch by her. Good. Get there. Drive your hands. Good. And notice how she's blocking most balls back into the court. We want our guy, our players to block the balls back down into the center of the court. So that means they're square, their hands are in pretty good position. When I see balls going back into the center, I, I, like, I like where her hand position is. Good. So that time she reached a little bit. Out to there. Take your area. Good. Good. So stay right there. Go. So what I like to do is I'll watch and see if she's square. We talked about taking an area, not reaching for the ball. It's one of the things we fight with. So I want to make sure that she's square and she's taking up her area. Okay? Here we go. Square, square, square. Good. So hey, a little bit of this. So I like to get feedback so they can see. So it's there. And now you're reaching to her. Okay? And she's hitting that ball. So back square, don't reach to the ball. Square, square, square. Still reach a little bit. So hey, your hands are dragging a little bit. Look at me, your hands are dragging around it. Square, okay? Square. Good, still reach for Don't even think about where she is. Just be square to back to the wall. Better, okay? Get those hands around, be square, take up your area. A Little bit of reach, that's okay. Get there, square, square, square. Better. Better. It's a good left hand too, okay? Box is, for us, is a really valuable tool. We, uh, we use it a lot, um, and we use it as a, really, uh, as a really easy way to train the middles. We don't need kids taking a, a hundred swings um, during practice. We can get up on the box and bang a little bit. We can isolate what we want to do. Um, and, and we do a lot of it, you know, maybe a half hour before practice. We want the kids to come in during individual sessions. Uh, if we see something wrong in what they're doing, we'll pull them out of practice and take them down to, um, uh, you know, a separate court and sort of work with them a little bit. So I think with blocking, uh, simpler is a lot better. So we, we try to simplify it for them. We don't do a whole lot of fancy things. Um, but we want their bodies in good position, hands in good position, and they just take up a lot of space. All right? Good.